Good morning and welcome back to this series of tutorials on plant simulation. In this video, we will see different ways to obtain results and reports from our simulation studies. Since we're going to focus exclusively on the results section, today we'll start with a completely finished simulation model. Furthermore, I have added the necessary configuration information in the form of comments in the model so that you can replicate it yourselves. The comments can be created using the comment object that we will find in the user interface tab. In fact, most of the objects we will see in today's video are located here. As for the comment, it has a first tab where we can write the information we want using different formatting options and a second tab, which will be the one we see externally, where it only allows us to choose the font size and color and the background color. In addition to the comments, it would be necessary to know the information from the tables, which are in this case the ones that define the cycle times for the different stations of the references A that we created in the source A and the references B that we created in the source B. In my case, just by placing the mouse over each of the tables, it is already indicating to me what information it contains without having to open them. This is because I have copied the information from each table into a comment. Comments should be enabled when opening the table here in the List tab of the General Toolbar, Option Show Comment. It allows adding the description of the table that we want to be visible from the outside. In any case, if you don't see clearly how to model this layout with just the information from the comments, I recommend watching the previous videos of the series in order, where all these objects are explained in more detail. Before we continue looking at how to obtain results from our simulations, it's interesting to see which results plant simulation calculates automatically. So far, we've only seen the automatic report generated from the event controller, which gives us a summary of the main statistics of the drains in our model. But the reality is that most plant simulation objects calculate statistics continuously. To see it, let's take, for example, the drain itself. If we open it and go to the Statistics tab, we can already find some of the main statistics, such as the percentage of working time or waiting time, among others, or the number of entries and exits of parts. Moreover, in this object, we have a specific tab for statistics by reference type. If we click on the table of detailed statistics, it will open an expanded version of the statistics that appear in the automatic report from the event controller we mentioned earlier. But all these statistics here correspond to internal attributes of the object itself, which plant simulation updates as time progresses. And like any other attribute, we can see them all if we select the object and press F8. Specifically, the vast majority of statistical result attributes carry the stat prefix. So, if we start typing it, the list will automatically move towards it. Most of these attributes have a fairly self-explanatory name, but if you have any doubts, as always, I recommend that you seek help in the program, which you can access by selecting any of them and pressing F1. Starting from here, let's see what ways to get results Plant Simulation offers us. The first object we will see is the display, which allows viewing these automatic statistics in real time from the frame itself. We will find it, as in the previous case, in the User Interface tab. Let's instantiate one for each drain to visualize how the parts per hour evolve during the simulation. If we open the menu, we see that the options are simple. In the Data tab, we will define what information we want to see, which in our case is the parts per hour of the drain, so we will write drain.stat through put per hour. If we didn't know. We could also click on the ellipsis, navigate until we find the drain, double-click to enter the attributes, and navigate until we find the attribute we're looking for. Next, in comment, we will write pieces per hour, followed by colon and space, since this text will be placed right in front of the result to facilitate understanding. Finally, we would need to define the update mode. If we choose sample, which is the default, it will update the result according to the interval we define. The watch option allows updating the result every time it changes, but it also consumes many more resources, and not all attributes allow this option. We will leave it as default. If we now save the changes and start the simulation, we won't see any changes in the display object. This happens because in addition to configuring it, we must also activate the display. We can do this with right-click and activate or by opening it, and in the checkbox at the top, activate the display. 
If we now repeat the setup with the other drain, we will indeed be able to see the statistics in real time for both drains. The next object we will look at today is the chart object, which is also in the user interface tab. This object has a very extensive configuration, so for today's video we will see only a few examples. The fastest way to set up a chart is by directly dragging the elements we want to see results from onto it. For instance, let's imagine we want to see a histogram of the conveyor occupancy. If we drag any of them onto the chart, a dialog appears offering us two default types of charts. We select Occupancy and click on OK. Now a real-time graph appears showing the percentage of time the conveyor has been with each number of pieces. If we keep dragging conveyors to the chart object, the chart would also update. The other default type that it offers us is that of resources. Let's exemplify this by dragging the stations. Now we see a different station for each one of the columns, and we can see what percentage of the total simulation time they have been operational, in failure, stopped, or in another state. If we open the object, we will see that in the tabs display, access, labels, color, and font. We can customize each of the aspects from the colors, the three effect, or the type of chart we want. In the Data tab, we can manually edit the input table, where the attributes that the chart displays are defined, which, as we see, are the statistical attributes we already know. Finally, in the Display tab, we can enable the option Display in Frame, which allows viewing the chart as part of the frame itself instead of as a separate window. Another object closely related to the last one is the worker chart, which is specifically designed to generate charts for the operators. This object is located in the Tools folder, but we will have to import it manually from the Manage Class Library button. Just as it happened with the Transfer Station object, the worker chart also has an extra layer of customization, which makes the menu somewhat different from the rest. To activate it, simply drag our worker pool to the box and then set up how we want to display the information. On the one hand, we can gather aggregated statistics for the entire set by classes or individuals, and also choose whether we want to take into account the entire simulation time or just the operational time. We will choose individual statistics and leave the rest as default. Finally, in the Configuration tab, we will define a sampling period of one minute and save the changes. If we go back to Run the Simulation and right-click on the Worker Chart, View Chart, it will show us a graph somewhat similar to the Stations one, but in this case for the configured workers. To conclude this review of the different ways to obtain results from our simulation models, we will look at two more objects. The first is the Sankey Diagram object, which we will also find in the User Interface tab. This object allows us to graphically differentiate on our model those areas that have a higher traffic of pieces. The Sankey Diagram object menu is quite straightforward. Mainly, we need to modify the table in the Objects tab, always remembering first to break the inheritance, and edit the path of the MU class to that of the object we want to observe. To see the results, we save the changes and execute our model so that the Sankey Diagram object has time to gather information. Then, we press on the right button, Show, and we will see a line through all the paths that an instance of the class we have selected has followed. The wider the line, the higher the frequency of pass over this point. Finally, we will have a look at the HTML report object which is also in the User Interface tab. This object allows, simply by right-clicking, Show, to obtain a report with some of the results of our simulation. 
This report is in HTML format and can be exported as PDF if we click on print. We can drag several of the charts we have been creating onto the report for it to add them automatically. If we want to customize it, from the object zone menu we can edit the HTML code, but this part is beyond the scope of the video. With this last item, we have reviewed the main ways to generate reports from our simulation models. In the next video, we will see how to conduct experiments to find optimal results. Greetings, and until the next video.